Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. To all thee who has ears, this is Professor Lorenzo McCoy, and as you can see, it is December 24th, La Navidad Eve, and I'd like to wish all of you season's greetings, peace and blessings, and stay healthy. This particular video is a follow-up to a follow-up, you know, for all of you that saw my video on the Baker Sis, and since I am getting settled into my new place, I can start upgrading these videos and make them look a lot better. I really don't like just throwing on the laptop, you know, late at night and driving with it. Uh, because, you know, the audio is not the best, the visual is not the best, and I would like for you to see a lot of the things I'm talking about in reference to different websites I may be referring you to and uh, different charts and things that you may need to look at. So this is the video right here, as you can see on the screenshot. Uh, where I was talking about the Baker Sis. And basically for those who may not know yet, may have not watched the video, about four months ago, while playing basketball, um, a guy fell on the, on the ground while I was going forward and both of our legs locked together. I was running forward, he was rolling backwards, and I felt something pop in the back of my knee. And I kept playing, of course, you know, that's the type of guy I am, a warrior, you know, I was like, oh, I think I feel all right. I was like, oh, it felt strange. I never had that feeling before. And I've never had any knee injuries. And I'm unlike a lot of people I play with, I've never had uh, ankles, you know, messed up. Whenever I was spraying the ankle, I can usually keep on playing and it'll stop hurting after a while. But um, just like the video I just showed you before, I did finally mess up my ankle and my tendons from this whole summer, it took a whole long summer of, of doing it. And now with this particular one, it happened instantaneously with that partic this particular injury. And I felt a snap at the back of my um, my knee. And I kept playing, but I noticed over the next couple of weeks afterwards, I say about three weeks, I noticed I wasn't able to jump like I wanted to. And it felt like my knee was hurting in the front. If, and then when I would sit down in a quiet room and just straighten out my knee, I was hearing it crackling and popping and stuff. It felt like it was sounding like um, the, the rusty gate on the front of a, a haunted house or something. You know what I'm saying? In front of the front yard of a haunted house. That's how my knee was sounding to me. And I was like, oh, something, something's not right. But, you know, you know me. I kept going to work. I keep getting new clients, keep teaching, you know doing little lectures locally and stuff like that and um i'm still like man something something's not feeling right i don't like it you know i'm buffing up my nutrition just to make sure you know my body can heal itself but it wasn't healing yet and i went to the, the so-called doctor's office same people i went to and told them about my ankle and by this time i'd done my own research and i said i think i have a baker cyst uh, how do you know you have a baker sense? And I was like, um, you know, I just did some, you know, little research. And whenever I go to the doctor's office, I try not to be too antagonistic and I'll try not to make myself, you know, higher than them. I like to see us on the same level, but I understand they don't really get that. So I try to put myself just one notch below them and say, oh, great doctor, you know, what do you think it is? You know, this is what I did in my humble research, but what do you think, oh, great doctor? <laughs> but, you know, instead of them really taking it serious, you know, I'm just, oh, are oh, you getting old? Maybe you should stop playing ball. And I was like, oh, no, that's not, that's not the answer. I'm an athlete, you know, forever. Um, I want to fix this. You know, could you at least do some research into this? But make a long story short, it took like four months, and they finally you know, let me know that it's a meniscus tear, you know, after a couple of MRIs and stuff like that. And of course, they want to do surgery. Now, with that backdrop, I'm going to go into some of the research just in case some of you guys might be dealing with this particular malady or know someone else is too. If, and you might be thinking, should you take a surgery, you know, if, or if, are there any ways to heal it uh, naturally? Let's get into it. First, Wikipedia. Once again, I love Wikipedia. A lot of people may say what they want. But I love the basic setup. I like knowing the basic definition and I like to know the etymology of it before they go a little bit deeper into different charts. A baker cyst, also known as plopidial cyst, that's how I pronounce it. You'll hear other people pronounce it plopatial cyst, is a benign swelling of the semimembranous 
or more rarely some other synovial bursa found behind the knee joint. It is named after the surgeon who first described it, William Morant Baker, 1838-1896. It's not a true cyst as an open communication with the synovial sac is often maintained. So it'll be a cyst if it was closed off. In adults, Baker cysts usually arise from almost any form of knee arthritis, i.e. rheumatoid arthritis, or cartilage, particularly a meniscus tear. Baker cysts in children do not point to underlying joint disease. Baker cysts arise between the tendons of the medial head of the gastrocnemius and the semimembranous muscles. They are posterior to the medial femoral condyle. The synovial sac of the knee joint can, under certain circumstances, produce a posterior bulge. In the popliteal space, the space behind the knee, and for those, you know, just know that, that term, popliteal, or what I usually say is um, popliteal space, is just a little cavern. It's the same thing that you have up under your armpit, under your armpits. So just like you can think of your armpits, it's just like that at the back of your knee too. It's like a little cavernous space right there. So into the popliteal space, the space behind the knee. When this bulge becomes large enough, it becomes palpable and cystic. You know, you can feel it. Most Baker cysts maintain the direct communication with the synovial cavity of the knee. But sometimes the new cyst pinches off. A Baker cyst can rupture and produce acute pain behind the knee and in the calf and swelling of the calf muscles. Now let's look at this chart before I go down a little bit further. Let me pull it up big for you. Enlarge it. There's your femur bone coming from the top of your leg and there's your tibia now. Of course you see the uh, Cyrillic text. And I believe this is Russian right here. But uh, my Russian is not that good. Let me see. Prato, Prato, Gradye. No, it doesn't matter. But okay, the femur at the top, the tibia coming from the bottom. But as you see, you see that liquid going out in the arrows right there? That little valve, there's a valve there that's usually pinched off that keeps that synovial fluid inside there. You see this little... Um, this is your patella right here, your so-called kneecap right there, just floating on the outside right there. There's the femur. There's the tibia from the bottom of your leg coming together. And you have this area in between so you don't have that so-called bone-on-bone thing going on that they're saying, oh, you have no more cartilage left. What they're actually talking about right on top of these bones right here, you have meniscus before you even get into the uh, regular cartilage right there then you got this fluid that that's supposed to keep this whole um this whole like seeded area this whole concealed area keep it nice and lubricated so it's moving nice and fluid but sometimes as you see that fluid can come out into this bursa over here and it can collect and then like they said it's between these muscles here which would be your, you know, by, by right behind your knee, the calf muscles going down there and coming from right off of your hamstrings. You got the semimembranous muscle and the gastrocnemius right there. It's right between those two. Let's go back. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is by examination. A baker cyst is easier to see from behind when the patient's standing with knees fully extended. And like with me, I can feel it. And like when I'm laying down, it's this big little knot right there. It is most easily palpated, which means felt, you know, with the knee partially flexed. Diagnosis is confirmed by ultrasonography. Although if needed and there is no suspicion of a popliteal or popliotal arter uh, artery aneurysm, then aspiration of synovial fluid from the cyst may be undertaken with care. An MRI image can reveal presence of a Baker cyst. And I finally, you know, after four months, you know, they finally did an MRI. And, uh, oh, yeah, you, I, they're, 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 we, see, we see a popliteal cyst right there. Of course, sucker, I could have been taking care of it 
four months ago. But oh well, at least I was doing it on my own. But I like to get a, a second opinion and I would like to see the imagery myself too because I'm curious. You know, I like to see exactly where it is because I know from my research, you know, that they want to operate depending on where that tear is in the meniscus. And we're going to get into that. An infrequent but potentially life threatening complication which may need to be excluded by blood tests and ultrasonography is deep vein thrombosis, DVT, which is very, very serious. It could be something totally different. That's why you do want to work with your doctors too. And as I should say, and I need to start putting on a lot of these videos, this information is for educational purposes only for those like me who have a love for knowledge. This is not, and I cannot state this any more seriously, don't take this information or any other information like this as the last resort. Always work with some healthcare professional, somebody who gets paid to do this stuff and who is licensed to do it. But I always urge you to find someone who's into holistic health. They can still go to the schools and everything like that, but you want to work with someone that will work with you to get you off of medication to prevent you from having to go to surgery, you know, and things like that. And if they're not talking about nutrition, they don't know what they're talking about. You can take that from me and tell them Lorenzo told you. Yo, so, you know, first you want to make sure it's not DVT, deep vein thrombosis. Quick assessment of the possibility of DVT may be required where a Baker cyst has compressed vascular structures, causing leg edema, and this sets up conditions for deep vein thrombosis to develop. A birth cyst commonly causes calf pain, swelling, and redness that may mimic thrombophlebitis. Treatment. Baker cysts usually require no treatment unless they are symptomatic. It is rare that the symptoms are actually coming from the cyst. See, that's something I want you guys to know about too. In most cases, there is another disorder in the knee. Arthritis, meniscal cartilage tear, etc. that is causing the problem. Initial treatment should be directed at correcting the source of the increased fluid production. Often rest and leg elevation are all that is needed. If necessary the cyst can be aspirated to reduce the size when they stick a needle in there and drain it. Then inject it with cortical steroid to reduce inflammation. Surgical excision is, reversed, uh, is reserved for cysts that cause a great amount of discomfort to the patient. A ruptured cyst is treated with rest, leg elevation, and injection of a cortical steroid into the knee. Baker cysts in children, unlike in older people, nearly always disappear within time and rarely require excision. Ice pack therapy may sometimes be an effective way of controlling the pain related to Baker cysts. Heat is also commonly used. A knee brace can offer support given the, the feel of stability in the joint. Many activities can put strain on the knee and cause pain in the cases of Baker cysts. Avoiding activities such as squatting, kneeling, heavy lifting, climbing, and even running can help prevent the pain. Despite this, some exercises can relieve pain and a physiotherapist may instruct on stretching and strengthening. There we go again. We're talking about, see, they finally getting these, They after all of this time, Western science is finally understanding stretching and strengthening. They used to just say, we're exercise. But stretching and strengthening, they finally are understanding in order to heal different maladies, it's about the stretching and strengthening the muscles to help the other muscles that are, um, that are um, they have the diseases to get that support and so they can be stronger instead of just taking something out of you you know um, even with aspiration you know draining the fluid instead of doing all those things without strengthening up that body part again you're going to keep having the same problem so they may instruct on stretching and strengthening the quadriceps and or the patellar ligament now Look at the, let's look at these pictures here. Here we go right here. This is that knee. This is the back part of the knee. This is that cavern I'm talking about. Plopatial space, plopatial space. 
front of your knee. It's hard to see here because it's not much liquid there. You know, these white areas are usually liquid. But that's your uh, bone coming down right here. Other bone coming up. Patella right here. And look at that. Fluid. Leaked out of here. And it's being caught up in here. So that's where your knee bends right there. That's what I'm dealing with right now. It took me four months. Just think I could have been getting relief from it if I can let them understand that I know what it is already before doing all the imaging. I can feel it myself. I can, I can see it. So Baker says, popliteal cyst is located behind the knee and is a swelling of the popliteal bursa. In this image, the Baker cyst is a yellowish, bulbous tissue which was identified during routine dissection. So somebody was, that's why it looks crazy it's on a person that's not alive, of course. But Baker cyst on axial MRI with communication channel between the semimembranous muscle and the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. And like they said, um, it's not a true cyst in definition, you know, when there is still communication. What they mean, communication, that little valve that we're talking about, is still open and the fluid can go back and forth a little bit, but it, most of it gets trapped in that bursa there, into that, in that little sac. Baker cyst on MRI, sagittal image. Baker cyst on MRI, you know, MRI, sagittal image, you know, right there. Now, that's just so I can give you some, um, so you can see what I'm talking about. Get a couple of definitions and see exactly where on your body it is. Now, let's get into some videos that I found for you guys, you know, um, in terms of, let's first uh, let's go to the signs. These guys, again, if you didn't watch the last video, they have physical therapy videos, the name of their YouTube channel, and I'll let them explain the rest. The top three signs that you may have a meniscus tear in your knee. Top three tests or signs, Bob? Both. Okay. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical and therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. All right, top three signs that you may have a tear in your meniscus. That's that cartilage in your knee. Something happened and you're feeling pain there and you're wondering if you have a tear. We're going to show you some ways you can maybe determine whether you do. Right at home. Yeah, right at home. Okay. First one is called the Thessaly test. I don't know who it's named after. I'm sure somebody named Thessaly. Yeah, as a doctor, I would imagine. All right, so what do you, you can do this. You can actually do this one on your own, Brad. Just find a countertop or something that you can hold on to. I rolled up my, my pant leg here, and what you're going to do is you're going to bend your knee to about 20 degrees, right which is there. not very much. Yep. Okay? Got and then this leg unweighted. Yep. And then with, with you in this position, you're going to actually rotate back and forth like this. Now, you're not just moving your arms. You're moving your legs, so you're twisting yep. on the knee. The hips move, and, and the knee actually, the yep. joint is twisting a little bit on each other with full weight right. on it. And when you're looking for pain. Okay. If, you know, if it, if it hurts this direction or this direction, it, it kind of tells you which compartment it is, but right. you, you're not going to know that. But if this gives you pain, you do it three times, that's a, a decent sign that cartilage is involved or maybe you have arthritis in there too. There, yeah, there yeah. could be some other things. But so, it's a positive test. Why don't you roll up your pant leg? Yeah, All right. Now when you're looking at a knee here, one thing... Um, you can see if there's tenderness along the joint line, we call it. So if you take your hand, here's the kneecap. You just put it right below the kneecap. This is where the joint is, Brad. Sure. So you can rub along here. Does it hurt here? And at the joint line is where the meniscus is. Right. Where the, or does it hurt on the inside here? Right. And, you know, I went in to have an orthopedic surgeon, and he, this is exactly one of the tests he did on me. Okay. Now, going right into that, you can flip it up onto here, and you can see, does the knee straighten all the way? So full extension? Yeah, if it doesn't, right there. there may be something blocking it and causing it, stopping it from extending it fully. Right. So, so if you go down in here and it, it really doesn't want to go, and there's probably maybe some pain associated with it. Then you might have a blockage from a, a torn meniscus right. on there. You know, you can compare the two. You can put them both out, and you can see this one straightens out all the way, and that one doesn't, you know, so then you can see that. 
that there's, a, there's an actual difference. Sure. So that's a, okay. The last test you're going to actually need someone to help you with, Brad. Right. And that would be the aptly compression test. Can you lay down flat? Okay, so we're going to do it on this knee right here. All you do is you bring the knee up to a right angle here. I'm pushing through the heel. And while I'm pushing through the heel, I'm turning it out this way, and I'm turning it this way. Now, sometimes people actually, while they're turning it, they might even go like this. Turn it one way and, and, and bend the knee a little bit, or straighten the knee a little bit. Right. But the, the, the simple part of the test, the simple te way to test is just actually push down and grind this way, grind this way, mm -hmm. and see if, if you're having pain with that. How are you doing, Brad, by the way? No, I'm fine, pain-free. Okay, Brad's got a good menisci. So that's it, Brad. That's the three tests, you know. You know. And uh, unfortunately, if you have a torn meniscus, we had another video on that, whether or not it can heal. And actually, that's the next one I want to show you guys, too. And you see it right over here. Can a meniscus tear and your knee heal on its own? And also, they have a very good one right next to it because we always heard about the ACL, ACL, ACL. But a lot of us don't really know what they're talking about. But if you watch sports, you're always seeing someone turn an ACL or the meniscus. So these two videos here, I want before I go to the other ones right here for the three exercises that um, you can do for your uh, meniscus tear, which is what I have. And, uh, and I'm going to get into, you know, when I went to the doctor's office and I was asking them, okay, and he said, yes, y'all, yeah, you do have a meniscus tear, which I already knew because <laughs> I knew I didn't have uh, osteoarthritis within one second of that accident, you know, and the, um, on the basketball court. I knew it was a meniscus tear, but that's usually what, what causes this. But, um, and I asked him, I said, okay, so which, what it is, what is it? Is it, do I have it in the, the white, white area or the white, red or the red, red area? He said, how do you know that? Which just sounds funny to me because I'm like, anybody can read, anybody can do this research. But the fact that he said it like that is like, we're just not supposed to know. You're not, you're supposed to be stupid and just come and do the, um, ex you know, because at first I was thinking, that, okay, he, he didn't want to aspirate it and he was, he had me for a second thinking, okay, he, he might be talking the way I like him to talk because he said, I usually what people do, they do the injection, but usually that can keep coming back. And I was like, I like what you're saying, doc. You know what I'm saying? That's because I understand that's what most people do, so you can keep them coming back. I'm glad you're not that type, and I'd like to find out the reason. And he was saying, yeah, you know, we like to deal with the reason. But when I went back again, I see what he wants to do. He wants to go right to surgery. And I was like, oh, man, here we go. And of course, and uh, and even before I wanted, that's why I said, so I want to know, you know, is it what region of the meniscus is is torn? You know, because depending on where it is, and that's what you're about to see in this video right here. I'll let them explain it to you. But it was interesting. He was ready to do the surgery, and you know, we're gonna do some clip, clip, snip, snip, and smooth it out, which is where they sort of scrape it and try to shape it back again. So today we're going to ask the question, Brad, mm -hmm. can a torn meniscus heal? Is this for a million dollars, Bob? It is. Watch Bob this. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today we're going to ask the question, Brad, and we're going to answer the question, can a torn meniscus heal? Meniscus. So, it's, where we'll talk about? about that in just a second. Okay. But right now, the the answer, really, the short answer is unlikely. It's okay. very unlikely. But that's really not the question you should be asking, Brad. Right. The question is, are your symptoms going to go away mm -hmm. when you have a torn meniscus, or are you going to need surgery? Right. So that's what we're going to answer today. So if symptoms gone right. away, that means you can go back to your normal activity. Yeah. So why care if you have a torn meniscus? Exactly. So, okay. Let's find out. All right. Let's first talk about what is a meniscus, Brad. It's yeah. a. It's a. Do you want to show on this here first? I think there's a nice model. If you look at your knee and you took off your tibia, that yep, shin bone, bone right there, and ripped it off, and you looked at the top of the tibia bone, what we did is we just have a model. This is not what it looks like in your body. It's actually white, but this is a nice view, so you can see it. These red outs on the outer border of each tibial plateau, they're kind of horseshoe shaped. Horseshoe or lunar shaped? Sure. Moon. Yep. yep. And that's kind of a cushion when it goes on the, 
onto the on the, the femur, yep. like that. It's a shock absorber. Right. It helps the joint uh, function the way it's supposed to. You know, to. one thing I want to point out too, Brad, real quickly, is that th when people say cartilage, this is cartilage. Right. But there's also cartilage on the bone itself here, right. articular cartilage. Sure. So sometimes it's a little confusing to people. Uh, when they say bone on bone, they're actually talking about the cartilage on here that got wore off. Right. Not, not this one here right. so much. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look at the diagram here, Brad. Sure. Now, if you're... Lonnie, can you... You got this? Looks like bananas, Bob. They look like bananas, yeah. If, if you're a young person, by the way, the, the circulation, you have pretty good circulation throughout the entire meniscus. Right, so this represents... The outer third of the meniscus. Right. This, here's one meniscus, moon-shaped, like you said, and the outer third on just about everybody has good circulation. That's the red zone, they call it. So we got some blood supply yep. in there. The white zone, there's not such good circulation, so it's not going to heal. Right. Now, on a young person, if you're yo younger than maybe 17, 18, there's yeah. a chance it could heal because your entire meniscus is going to be... It's a little more red. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. more red. Sure. All right, let's look at some of the tears, though, the, the re and why this is important. If you have a vertical or a longitudinal tear like this, and it's in the red zone, mm -hmm. it has a chance to heal. Sure. I mean, and, and it's, it's li less likely to give you trouble. This is a transverse radial, Brad. Okay. Okay, that's going to give you a little more trouble. This is an oblique. That's, oh, hold on a second. I got that one wrong, I think. That's all right. No, they're, they're both about the same. They're both, they're both similar like this. This is a horizontal. This is just straight across. That's generally going to give you trouble. Sure. Um, and this is a degenerative, which means it's just wearing away. Right. And these are really hard to repair because it's wispy and it, you can't sew it together. Right. Right. I mean, the two type of surgeries you're going to have when you have surgery is they're just going to debride it or remove some of the meniscus. Right. They're not going to sew it together typically or that kind of thing. Right. And then there's the other type where they repair it where they do sew it together. Okay. So those so, are the two types. So just so you know, th here is the meniscus. He's talking about tears and which direction on here if you're having a... Hard time so really, that. the longitudinal tear is the one that you're most likely going to have good luck with. Okay. So, so if they give you a report, you know, you, you know right. what's going on. There you go. All right. Should you should you have surgery? That's the question, isn't it? Right. Boom. Um, generally, for most people, you should try some physical therapy or exercises first. Right. Almost in the vast majority of the cases. Now, if your knee is locking up, right, uh, which means what, Brad? Well. If you look Incredible. at, can you zoom in here? If, let's say you're walk, moving your knee and you're walking and all of a sudden the meniscus has a tear in it and it flips up and over like that. And that or takes, a piece of it flips up. Right. Yeah. It's going to put, the it's mechanics gonna, of it is going to cause it to lock up yeah, physically. It's, it's going to block the knee. And typically that hurts. Right. And yeah. you're going to get swelling with it. And you, might, you not, may not be able to straighten the knee all the way. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to bend the knee at all. It might give way. It's sure. going to lock up. You know, and if that's happening consistently, yep. you know, you're leaning towards surgery. Mm -hmm. um, if, if not, if you're just, you know, you had a tear, um, you're having, some, you know, some symptoms, but it's not really locking up, a little bit of swelling, generally they say try a couple months of therapy. Right. You know, try a month. Uh, and what they have found, you know, comparing people to the ones that had surgery and the ones that didn't have surgery, like six months later, there's not much difference between them. So as far as function and yeah, pain. as far as function and pain. Sure. So if if you're you know again you're having a lot of trouble you know the, it's locking up and all that mm -hmm. that's a quality of life issue then you may have to go in for the surgery but otherwise our recommendation is not until you've tried some therapy. Right. Do some conservative first. Let the body remodel and heal on its yeah, own. Yeah, the body wants to heal. Right. I mean it always does. Now you know the, the thing is what we're going to say here is we're going to we're going to put together a video for you some of the top three exercises that you should do after you have and that's the one we're going to look up after this but i want to go over to this one and just give you a little bit more information because some of you who might be looking at this video or dealing with an acl uh ligament tear and uh here's some uh, information to have on that but as you see i'm i'm with these guys i'm trying to do therapy first i'm trying to drink plenty of water get plenty of fruits and vegetables and different herbs to help stop the inflammation you know from different injuries and i'm trying to get the right movement strengthening and stretching exercises first before just cutting doing the cutting up
But let's check this one out, though, because I think this is a, a very good video also. It's on the internet. You know, opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, is your knee pain or anybody's knee pain is really coming from a meniscus tear or from a ligament sprain? How to tell? That's a good question. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, some people, you know, I, I think you really need to understand the mechanics, and it's very, not, it's not that complicated right. unless you dissect it a little bit. Well, that's what we're here for. We're going to help dissect it. Exactly. So, Say no more, Bob. dissect or dissect? <laughs> Never mind. Say no more, Bob. <laughs> Don't get, I'm not an English major. Yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, so Bob. So we're going to look at the ligaments first? Well, yeah, let's look at the ligaments first because so many people jump right to the meniscus, I think, because uh, so I'm not sure it's just more popularly used or something of that right. nature. But if it is a ligament, you so know. So someone hurt their knee and they're wondering, is it the ligament, is it the meniscus, or right. is it just muscle, or is it and, so. And oftentimes it's, you know, people hear the ACL, which right. is one of the four major ligaments of the knee. We want to know about all four of them. Right. Okay. So let, let's, uh, here we've got uh, our knee here that we took from Bonaparte, Leopold. Leop. Now you got me saying Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon. Napoleon okay. Bonaparte. So here we got the knee. Now here's. You want me to hold anything? No, I, well, so far I'm doing good. I'm going to take the patella off. So that's the kneecap. Yep. He's taking that right yep. off. Yep. Just get that out of the way so we can look in there. Okay. Now we're going to look at. The so this is uh, the left leg. Mm -hmm. Here's the femur, and here's the knee right here for me. Right. I, can yep. see, I think they can see and that. And huh? down here is the foot, obviously. Yeah. So we're going to focus in right on the knee, and here you can see how this how the knee bends. Now, if you look at the blue kinesio tape we used here, because it works well for this. Those are your. This would be your MCL, your medial lateral ligament. Medial collateral ligament. And your LCL, lateral. Lateral collateral ligament. Okay. Now, the ACL and the, and the PCL are in inside. Here, yeah. Yep. And I don't, it was really hard. It, it's hard to put tape to represent those. So we're going to show you how to test them. Yeah, they're inside and they, make, they form an X. Yep. So. And uh, so you'll see that more clearly as we show you the test. Now, for these uh, ligaments, you can see they support lateral motion so this one's your leg cannot go this way now this tape is actually stretchy now your ligaments are they don't stretch at all right they're, they're very strong and they're attached to the bone and it prevents this from happening or this from happening okay so and then the the acl and the pcl bob i've got one little thing here to do and while i do that why don't you mention all right by the way if you are new on our channel please just take a second to subscribe to us we provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, and pain-free, and we upload every day. The subscription button should be up here or, or down here. And by the way, if you haven't liked us on Facebook, you're going to want to like us, right, Brad? We're likable yeah, people. Yeah, please like us. Um, because well, I'm in likable. I don't know about Bob. Well, <laughs> anyway, we're put a half a like. We're giving away stuff all the time, and, and right now I'm going to put up a picture, a photo, and it's the uh, Napo Memory Foam Lumbar Support Pillow Slash Cushion. It's for low back pain relief for home, office, and car use. And uh, we're going to be giving away three of these, Brad. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's a good deal. And uh, we're going to do that over the next week or so. So all you're going to have to do is go in and, and like the picture, uh, and, and, uh, and you're in the contest. We make it very simple. Excellent. So, Excellent. All right, well. now we're back. Okay, so we talked about the support of the MCL and the LCL, which support the knee this way. Mm -hmm. Now if you look at the knee from the side view, we need support so the knee doesn't slip forward, forward or, back. or backwards. So the ACL is responsible for forward. this direction. Yeah. So it doesn't allow this to come off and then you're, <laughs> right. you would have a big problem and get short in a hurry. And then the PCL, posterior uh, cruciate, ligament, cruciate ligament, cruciate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> prevents it from going this way. So we got support this way and we've got support this way. And now that I've got the knee apart, Bob, we might as well look at the meniscus right sure. away. So those are the four ligaments. That, that, you know, that's the problem. There's only four ligaments holding the knee together, and that's why each one is so crucial. Exactly. So, exactly. So then we got the, the cushions between the joints, right? Right, which is, we're calling oh, them. Between the bones. Between the bones, which is your meniscus. And the meniscus is attached to the tibia, the lower part. And I've got it red here. In real life, it's actually white. Okay, but this shows up much better. And you got the lateral side and the medial aspect of the meniscus. And it's shaped, they're shaped kind of like lateral this. Lateral and medial. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I've got the, the leg mixed up. Yeah. But they're shaped kind of like a horseshoe. 
and actually, if I would have did a better job cutting my construction paper, you would see that here. But the big thing is, is you know where they are, and when they come together, that that's now we can't put them together like that underneath yeah. because well, we, we have like that. There you go. The femur actually squishes down on there, and yeah. there's a cushion between the two bones, and that's part of the job of the meniscus. So, so you can see if one of these gets torn, and it even flips up like this. Yeah. It's going to block the motion, yep. and and uh, it's it's going to be painful. Right, and, that's what, and your and the knee's not going to be able to move. Exactly, and that's what some of the tests are designed to pull out. Very good. So, let's go to the. Why don't you lay down, Bob? Sure. I'm going to grab a pillow. Yeah, grab a pillow. Since take you, a nap. you never seem to be worried about my comfort, Brad. No, nope, not really. Not that I'm complaining. But I'm not that. Go ahead, lay down. I'm not that way with my patients, Bob. <laughs> I care about them. Okay, let's bring this leg up once. All right. Okay. Now I'm gonna do show you the test on the LCL and the MCL. You want to so, grab that again, Bob? So those are the ligaments on the side. Right. The side ligaments. These tests are relatively easy to do, but they take a feel. And we're in the knees here. We want to test to make see if it's structurally sound in that direction. Uh, they're easy, to, relatively easy to do. But if you haven't done this on a a number of legs, you don't have the right feel. Right, so right. I'm going to demonstrate it to you. I don't suggest that you do it, but when you go and see a therapist or a doctor, you're going to know why they're doing it and understand it. And maybe even ask for them to do it. Exactly. It? Yeah. Why don't you come over this way, Bob? I always like to have my patient get close to the edge. I bring their leg off. I have them relax. I put a slight bend in the knee. And what I'm going to do here, let me get over here. I don't uh. do it this way, but so you can see what I'm doing. One hand is here and one hand is here and I slightly bend the knee and I'm going to pull in on the knee here and support here and go like this. And actually I can, you won't be able to see this, but I can feel there's some play in Bob's knee. Can you feel that Bob? Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of fun. Now that's the LCL, the outside one. Now I'm going to do the same test. I'm going to push this direction while I support the knee with a slight bend in it, about 10 degrees. And it is kind of neat and, and there's not a lot of effort, it's very little strength needed. If someone has a complete tear of one of these ligaments, like my instructor said, it's like a barn door opening wide up. You can do this and you don't feel that, that, resistance. that resistance. The best way to do this, if you've got a sore knee on the right, test the good knee first. Get exactly. A, get a feel for how they are on the good knee, then you'll know and more, you know, if two knees are healthy, they're going to feel similar. And if you got a complete tear, it's going to be pretty obvious. Maybe a little painful too. And these tests should not create any amount of pain. If they are, you don't do them. Right. Um, now let's go to the ACL and PCL. Sure. Okay. I'm just, there's a number of ways to do this. I'm just going to show you uh, two simple ways. I have the patient sit or lay down like this, and then I sit right on their foot right here, and I'm going to bring your pant leg up, Bob, so we can look at your knee. Cause he, you so again, he's just he's pulling that, that lower bone forward. Exactly, yeah. We'll look at this. So I can hold this part. Yeah. I'm going to pull his tibia this way. If the ACL is uh, torn, I'm going to get quite a bit of motion, yeah. Subluxation this way, and I'm going to go the other direction to test the PCL, okay? Now, they call it the anterior drawer because it's like you're pulling out a drawer. Exactly. Yeah. And anterior means forward right. direction. And sometimes right here, I'll push my finger, my thumbs in right along the joint line, which is just below the, the kneecap, which takes a little practice to know where that is too. So don't expect you can feel that. And then I'm going to come under here, put my thumbs on the joint line so I can feel the translation between the joint, and I'm going to pull this way. And, and, you know, Bob doesn't have a lot of play. Some people that are lax, you can do this, and they'll go, you can feel that bone move, and it kind of goes clunk, clunk, and you that's all, normal. You can almost see it even. Yeah, exactly. Again, do the good knee first. You go to the, then you go back to the, the knee, the injured knee, and assess carefully. And then you're going to push this direction on the tibia, this way, and push. And, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen a PCL because they're not that common. No, they aren't. I, um, I haven't, to be honest Actually, with you. I think I did once when I was a student, and that was a long time uh, ago. Um, then you can push in this direction, and the translation will go this way, but it's going to be solid this way. There's the lo I'm not going to go through the Lockmans. It's common one. Right. It's probably more commonly used by therapists and doctors, but we're going to skip that because sure. I want to get to the meniscus test. Now, if, if everything feels sitting 
And I'm going to stop it right there because the last video we actually already saw the three different ways to tell if your meniscus was torn. But I wanted to add this one because some people might uh, actually have a ligament strain or tear instead of a meniscus tear like I do right now. And um, let's go into now the exercises that you can do and which what I'm doing right now for if you do have this problem and you like me want to avoid the um the surgery and we're gonna go to it right here and once again i want Howdy you to folks. subscribe to these guys like i told you in the last video Brad physical Hattie, therapy physical video is the name the of their youtube channel therapist on the internet and our opinion of course Just trying to mix it up brad <laughs> today we're going to talk about top three exercises to perform after a meniscus tear this is the assumption that you're not having well i want you to just pause this for a second because I, I know that uh my audio is a little off so when i'm speaking it's not going to be as loud as the um, when the uh, program is recording from the system itself it's a lot louder and I'm sure you can notice that I'll fix that later but I just wanted to say just in case you couldn't hear me while they were talking I want you guys to check on I mean, the reason why I'm using these guys I'm sharing other people who are in this same field also and their name is physical therapy video is the name of their YouTube channel they do post every single day and they're a very good resource for you guys you know to go and see if you have any problems you know if you're trying to diagnose things yourself so that when you do go to your doctor you're not just going in dumbfounded and everyone is speaking over your head you can go in as a real patient so that you can you know continue your learning with your doctor and doctor does mean teacher so you can continue your learning as a good avid student an a plus student and not the f plus dumb dumb student who just let people cut them up okay back back to the video surgery and that uh, you just want to go ahead and try some exercise after you've tore your meniscus right. or your cartilage in your knee. Right, yeah, we're already making the assumption you probably are very familiar with the meniscus in your knee joint. It can tear, it can get uh, all kinds of little problems with it. It calls knee pain and locking of the knee. It locks right up sometimes. So let's go through the first exercise. Right, and uh, before you start, Brad, before you do the exercise, you're probably you know, you're going to do a couple days of rest, ice, compression, elevation, the rice acronym right so right. okay all right the first first exercise that you're going to do is just what we call straight leg raises so we're going to pretend this is the one that has the knee uh, meniscus tear and the first one you're going to do you go ahead and, and uh, bring this one up and put it flat on the on the bed yeah, right here. Get or the floor your knee up. and you're going to go up about this high you're doing isometric strengthening Count to what? How long, Brad? Well, I like to count to eight, seven, eight, somewhere in there. It depends on how fast you count. That's course. right. If you count really fast, better count to ten. Right. <laughs> and believe me, it'll start to shake after a little bit after right. you're doing these. So we're working the quad. As a matter of fact, yep. I can feel Bob's massive quad right here. That and it's lateral. already starting to shake, isn't it? Yeah. Now, you're going to try and keep the knee straight with this, but you got to do as tolerated. If you're getting some sharp pain in there, you're going to have to not do this. Right. One. And good. how many are we going to do, Brad? I like to do 8 to 10. Okay, 8 to 10. I'm keeping the toe straight up on this one. Yep. Or do you want to turn out? Well, we're, we're not going to do that because we're going to do the abductor. That's well. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't we do that one next? Yep. So then you just flip over onto your side. I hope you can hear me yet with my mic. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to bring it up this way now. Mm -hmm. and, and this one works the adductors, the inside of the thigh, and it also gets that VMO a little bit. Right, that, that one that's important for the uh, patella to move properly. Right. Yep. Oh, that foot is almost kicking me, Bob. Can you see? Okay, I'm pointing straight forward. Are you in the way, Brad? Yes, I'm in the way. There's foot <laughs> All right. like this. Okay. So again, 8 to 10, yep. and hold for a good 8 seconds or so. Yeah, th these aren't going to necessarily heal your meniscus, but they're going to keep your leg in shape. That, that's what we're trying to do, keep your leg strong. Now yeah. i got to flip over onto my side, and now I'm going to bring it up straight like that. Right. Knee is straight if you can do it. Uh, point your knee up, Bob. Or that is what you do not want to do. You want to keep it pointed like this, and do it incorrectly. Bring your hip way over here. Uh, like that. People, I, this is exaggerated, but you want to make sure your hip is way up like that. So you're doing a true hip abduction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And then the last one in this position you're going to do is you're actually going to go ahead and bend your knee a little bit, and you're going to dig your heel into the bed. So, so if I have my hand, can you relax, Bob? And I put my hand there. Right now he's squishing my hand, and it's a little painful. Yeah. You're, you're strong, Bob. <laughs> You're going to feel it in the hamstring, and that's what we're trying to do is isometric yep. strengthening to the hamstring. Pushing down in that direction. Yep. Count to 10, same thing, 8 to 10. 
and a, a 10 second hold. Sure. And again, should be pain free or just, if anything, a mild pain, but you, then you got to be careful. Now, then when you're in this position, then what you're going to go ahead and you want to put that down, Brad. Sure. You can do this with your heel. Um, you know, you can do it with a sock on, on your foot instead of using a shoe. <laughs> but you're going to go ahead and slide the heel this way and bend it as far as you can, as pain allows. Right. You want to make sure you're getting full range in that knee, full range of motion. And, and you can take your hands and help it a little bit. If, you know, exactly. You can go ahead and grab and pull it a little bit. Right. But just getting that range of motion so things stay loose and the range of motion maintained. Stays full. And, you know, hopefully the meniscus is not tore that bad that eventually it's going to heal on its own. You know, you don't know if it's, you know. Or if there's a piece broken off, maybe they'll get reabsorbed. Sure. Um, so or it's just not gonna give you any trouble. Right. I mean. If it's real painful or starts locking up with these exercises, it's not the thing to do. Right, and in fact, this is, well, Brad, can I use oh, that chair? Oh, sure. Uh, the other one is you're gonna to wanna to, uh, go ahead and stretch, stretch it straight. You're gonna go ahead and put it up on a chair and go ahead and push it down a little bit. Sure. Now, if it locks or it won't let you go completely straight, that might mean you're gonna be a, a candidate for surgery, especially if it stays that way. Do a profile on yeah. that so they can see that better, Bob. So we're like this, and you're gonna go ahead and try to stretch it straight. Mm -hmm. Kind of a hamstring stretch is what you're doing, good posture. Yep. Um, but if it doesn't go on, you can give it little pushes, but just don't cause pain. Right. Uh, yep. You wanna go stay in that pain-free zone, you know, bump up against the pain, but, but don't cause the pain. Right, don't get the attitude, no pain, no gain, it's not going to be effective. Right. So number one was doing all the straight leg raises. Number two was doing the range of motion. And number three is more of an advanced strengthening exercise. So it's, it's feeling better when you're walking. Um, stairs might be a little difficult yet, so you're gonna avoid those. But then you're gonna go to here, have something to hang on to, and simply do a partial squat. Half squat mm -hmm. or partial squat. What you're trying to do is not really uh, have the knees bend more than 60 degrees. Right. 90 is a right angle. So, so too far. Yeah. But we can go down about to here, and you're going to feel those quadriceps working. Good posture, of course. Not yep. this. This is a common mistake. It's up tall, shoulders back, and down to about that 60. And you're going to do them slow, and you're going to do about 10 again. You can hold them here to get that isometric strengthening in the quads and working it. This is, all these are pretty. Yeah, pretty mild. What right. they found is that uh, if you bend the knee only that far, less than 60 degrees, you're not really putting much stress on the meniscus. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 you're not gonna make things worse. You're not gonna tear it worse. Right. So right. these are all things you can do. Uh, and hopefully that, you know, when the swelling goes down the knee and the, that you'll find out the tear, maybe it's a tear, but that you, you, you can live with it. Right. And it's not really giving you right. any pain. So why, why have anything done with it? Right. So, so, I don't know, Bob, we were getting pretty good at this. I, I would say so, too. I don't know why you think that now, but I we thought got, we like, always were pretty good. 742 videos now? Yeah, that's right. We've been around for a we while. So Thanks a lot for watching. Bob and Brad. So, yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. These guys have a lot of great videos. Please go ahead and check them out. I uh, wanted you, hopefully it didn't go over too long for you, but I like to make sure that you, I, I over give you information. And um, I think for this last one, I just wanted to end off with their view because uh, we went to Wikipedia first, but I wanted to give you their information on what the uh, Baker Cyst is, and I will end with that. Hi, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. And I'm Brad Heinrich, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. I must admit, Brad, you've never looked better. Thank you very much, Bob. Now, can we get on with the show? Yes, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Brad, quite often we've had people that um, that come into the clinic and they're really concerned because they have a bump on the back of their leg. Yep, yep. And, it's, and they should be, actually. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's amazing disproportionately how concerned they are. They're, they, they'll be less concerned about extreme pain in their knee, but as soon as they get that bump, they're really worried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about basically is generally if we turn this guy around, we look at the back of the knee. You got that ball, Brad? Yeah. I dropped it, Bob. Hold on. Way to go, Brad. Yeah. Generally, it's a, a bump that's on the inside of the, more towards the inside of the knee, towards the other knee. Right. So yeah. It's right here, and it's usually the size of maybe a marble. It's not this big. 
but it is soft like this ball. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And there's fluid in it. Mm -hmm. And and people are they they're thinking that that actually is the problem when actually it's a it's the secondary part of a problem. Really, is what has happened. So a little bump right there or right here. Yeah. So if you're looking at the leg, right, right in this area. So it'll be right here, right, right in that area. Yep. Right. I'm bummed. And what that is called is a Baker's cyst. And this is after William Morland Baker. Mm -hmm. He was a surgeon back in the 1800s, and he's the one that first described this. It's also called a popliteal cyst. Popliteal, Brad, by the way, means, you know how you got the armpit? Yeah. That's the knee pit, is the popliteal. <laughs> yeah, so the popliteal fossa in your, in your PT school. Right. It's, uh, anyway, so what's causing this bump, Brad? Um, you know what, Brad, we should probably have that knee model, too. Yeah. Could you toss Nate, it over can you, We make Nate film, we make him toss, we make him do everything here. Generally, the, with a knee problem, or generally when there's, there's swelling in the back of the knee, the problem is actually inside the joint itself. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know if you can see any of this yeah, knee. The, the model of the knee and the kneecap here has been flipped up. Yeah. But generally, there's the cartilage here, and that's torn or you have arthritis in here. So this is causing inflammation here in fluid, and that fluid seeps out towards the back into that sac, and it's a one-way valve, so it can't come back in again. Right. So you get that fluid here, and it can't go back into the joint. Now, the, the treatments for this are, you can get a corticosteroid, mm -hmm. they, can sh they can shoot that in there, you can put ice, you can compress it, you know, wrap it. Um, what people often quite have done is they have a, they stick a needle in it and they aspirate it. They actually pull the fluid out of there. And they think, great, it feels better. But the problem is it'll probably redevelop again unless you get what's going on inside treated. Cause the, get yeah. the problem. So the arthritis or the, the torn meniscus or the torn cartilage needs to be treated in order for that fluid not to keep being created. Right. So again, this really isn't the problem. This is just a symptom of the problem that developed. So that, that's basically the, what this video is about. I mean, that's all we're talking about today is, is we want to let you know it's not something to panic about. Now, occasionally, rarely, those can burst and they can even cause a blood clot to go into your leg. And, and uh, so you, you do want to be aware this right. is something you do want to check and have your doctor check out. Right. And so, and yeah, if it is a blood clot, then you need to have some definite treatment. Right, right. All right. And I don't think we got any other issues. Let's see. I think we covered everything, Brad. It's a one-way valve, and it doesn't want to come back again. So the fluid comes in, and it doesn't want to go out again. Right. And so it's right there. Right there is the model. Yep. Okay. And for your physical therapist, some of, we have therapists that watch this, Brad. Absolutely. It's between the semimembranosus and the gastrocnemius right. muscles, and it's a bursa. It's actually the... I think it's the semi-membranosis uh, bursa or the gastrocnemius bursa. There's, you know, we have all yeah. the bursas back People there. that just got out of school remember those a lot yeah. better than us. But uh, one way or another, I don't know why they watch us, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they watch. He makes a lot of fun of himself, but they, they are very serious when it comes to bringing knowledge. And that's what I wanted. So I think, guys, I think I did a pretty good job putting a lot of information together for you so if you do have this symptom you have enough information so when you do go back to your doctor you will go back to your doctor armed with information so that you can ask them the correct questions and then when they're speaking to you they're not speaking over your head once again subscribe please share like or dislike you know depending on what you like and um just um I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, peace. This has been Professor Lorenzo McCoy. Um, happy holidays to you.